My friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. In this video, uh, we will finally start talking about scripting. So Lua scripting, how to use the Lua programming language to script the whole logic of your game. Um, so yeah, the whole logic is scripted in Lua uh, in these .lua files. There is, for example, this main.lua script. Uh, every map also has its own script that describes uh, yeah, what, what happens on the map. For example, what happens when you press um, a button on the map? What happens when this particular enemy is killed if you want to activate uh, some kind of mechanism? So that can be done from the the script usually of the of the map where this happens all enemies also are uh, actually just lua scripts uh, probably not the not the easiest ones to understand but uh, you will you will get there don't worry and i will i will help um, in this video i will present really the, the basics about how your Lua scripts can communicate uh, with the engine. It, they can communicate both ways. Your Lua code can call some functions of the engine and the contrary also, the engine can call your Lua code. And we'll see how. Um, okay, so your favorite link will be the official documentation, technical documentation that can be accessed here or on our website. The Lua API reference here of the documentation, it describes all the functions and all the events of all data types of Solaris. So this documentation assumes that you already know um, the Lua programming language. If you don't know it yet, it's really not a problem because it's one of the easiest programming languages to, to learn. Um, I recommend the Lua programming language book. Uh, it's called Programming in Lua. Um, yeah, and it's, I think the link is in the description of all my tutorials. Um, yeah, so it's completely okay if you don't know Lua yet. Um, it's at it, it it's best it's if at least you have some basics about um, what is a variable, what is a function, what is a loop in any programming language. If not, well, you will have to learn. You will have to spend a little bit more time to understand. But uh, we will be, as always, happy to help. Um, so in Solaris, from your quest, from from your code. There are a lot of data types. There is uh, sprites, enemies, the game, the map, uh, the hero, all entities, timers. There are a lot of things, movements, and everything is documented here in, in all these pages. Um, for example, let's open the script um, initialgame.lua which is one of the easiest script scripts to, to understand. Um, it describes, it defines what uh, happens when, when you start a new game. So when, it, when the game does not start from an existing save game file, but uh, a fresh new game. We'll see later in another tutorial how to save and load uh, some save games. But when you test your game, by default, it automatically starts on some specific map with, uh, as you can see, three hearts and some abilities. For example, you can use your sword already, you can lift these bushes. And all of this is absolutely not uh, built in in the engine, it's just this code here that is provided by default. Uh, so you can change actually what you want. If you want to give more hearts, let's say um, 20 life points instead of 12 life points, 
it will mean five hearts. Um, and we have some other code that handles the display of this heart that you just saw. It's in HUD here. Uh, head up display, uh, in particular this script, hearts.lua. Again, you can change what you want. Um, yeah, we can have some fun and remove these two lines, game set ability lift and game set ability sword. See what happens. As you can guess, I will no longer be able to use my sword. I, I'm pressing C, but nothing happens. And I can no longer lift this bush. Um, yeah, and that's also where you define the initial starting location. So you can type the ID of another map, out, for example, inside dungeon. So the name here. And there we go, I'm starting in that other map. So, yeah, how does all of this work? Um, game set starting location, where is this function defined? Actually, it's a function, uh, like all functions of the type game, it's a built-in function that is provided by the official Lua API of the engine. So the, the source code of that function you will not find it in your Lua script. It's a built-in function, so it's defined in C++ actually. You, you could see the source code if you, uh, if you get the source code, um, the C++ source code of Solaris, which is open source, so that's possible. Um, but yeah, set starting location. What is important is that as all functions provided by the engine, it is documented here. So here in, in the page of the type game, and it describes exactly what happens when you call this function. Um, yeah. So you can use this, this documentation page to find out everything that is possible on, on all Solaris types. And as you can see, some of the types have a lot of functions. Um, yeah, as another example, let's try to um, modify a little bit the head up display here. Let's assume that you, you don't like uh, the fact that there are a lot of icons here. You want to make it a little bit uh, more simple. So let's say we want to remove the pause icon here and also the sword icon, so the orange and the green icon. Um, all the HUD is defined here in these scripts HUD directory, and it's completely defined in Lua. Nothing is built in here, so you can really change, change it the way you want. Um, so here we want to remove this one, and we want to remove this one we said. But then we will probably also want to move um, the remaining ones. So this X and V icon, we want to move them um, vertically a little bit uh, to the top. And we want to, make, to put V and the blue icon closer to the left. So let's actually undo just to see the coordinates that we had for the pause icon here. The Y coordinate was 6. So we will give the coordinate 6 to both item icons. And we will also move the, attack, the action icon from the same offset, which was 20 pixels. So this should work. And we also want to remove the attack icon which is x uh, equals 38. And the item icon here will be moved to the left. Uh, yeah, at this coordinate of 38. And same offset, we will need to move this action icon 30 pixel to the left. 
if I'm not mistaken, let's see. Okay. It looks good. So you can do anything that you want with, with your HUD. That was pretty much my point. <laughs> so here, this code um, is a bit special. Let's say it does not really look like code. It's just we create an object, we create a table, uh, and we define some properties on that table, and we return it. Actually, it means that it's another script that will call this. And that other script is probably hud.lua. At some point, it will call hud.config.lua. So it's here. We are using the require function, which is the standard Lua function to call a file from another file. Um, yeah, so the, you will not find the documentation of require here because this is the Lua API of the engine, but all standard Lua function like require, uh, yeah, they just, they, they are still available, but uh, since it's standard Lua, you will find them in the specification of Lua and not <laughs> in the specific specification of Solaris. Um, anyway, you can try to uh, check all this code if you are if you are curious. It does a lot of things, and you can just delete it and create your own HUD uh, if you prefer. Everything is possible. Um, okay. So, so far we used, we did some code that was calling uh, C++ function from the engine, for example, st set starting location. But as I was mentioning in introduction, it also works the opposite way. Sometimes the engine, so the C++ uh, core of Solaris will call your Lua code to notify you that some event just happened. That can mean, for example, that the hero just entered a map or that the player just pressed a key. Actually, a good example of that is in uh, your main script, there is this event on key pressed. So we call this an event. It's actually just a regular Lua function, um, which is defined on the object sol.main. And it's called event just because um, the C++ engine can call it. So it's documented here in the events section of uh, the sol.main page on key pressed. Um, so whenever the hero, the player presses a keyboard key, Solaris will check if your Lua code has defined a function with this name on sol.main and if yes, it will call it automatically. So it means that no Lua script here, none of your Lua script is actually calling this function. Here we define a function, but we never call it. It's, it's Solaris that will automatically call it. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. And then you can handle the, this event and do whatever you want as a reaction to the key being pressed. By default, we react to F11 or Alt return or Control return to switch uh, full screen mode and some some other stuff. We exit the program in some conditions. And as an example, let's say if uh, we press, I don't know, A, we want to play a sound. So how do you play a sound? This time you will call uh, code from Solaris. Yes, there is this audio page which documents how to play a sound or a music. sol.audio.playsound And then you need the ID of the sound to play, which is, let's say we want to play treasure here. So this one. 
you can also play them from the, the quest editor by double clicking them by the way which is what I just did and the idea of a sound as explained in the documentation is the file name without extension so if I do this it should work and I will also say handled equals true uh, like we do in the other cases just to stop this event from propagating to other objects so if I press A let's try okay I heard another sound it was unrelated sorry yeah this one was what we heard uh, when I pressed A okay so it works but what's uh, funny here is that I defined the event on key pressed on sol.main and this represents really the whole execution of the program so it means that if I press A during the title screen here it will also play uh, I don't know if I was fast enough but it really happens uh, whenever the process is running sol.main is the global state of your um, of your quest but actually you could also define this if you want it to happen let's say on a specific map so let's get back to our map uh, yeah it's this one we could modify the script of that map because the event on key pressed so there are a lot of events oops and some of them ha are available on multiple types and maps have a lot of events for example you can be notified when it's when a map starts when um, a map is suspended uh, when some treasure is obtained by the player on that map and then you also have all the same on key uh, pressed and um, input events than that you have um in sol.main but my point is yeah on key press is available on the map type as well so if i let's remove this default code if i define on key pressed but this time in i'm in a map script and i define it on my map object uh sorry key Then same same principle. Solaris will automatically call this code, but only when this particular map is active. So, since I'm editing the the script of that map, it will only happen on that map. Let's play the sound treasure here when we press A. okay it works i pressed it multiple times even and now that i i am on an other map if i press a again nothing happens so it works as expected so most of the time your your game behavior will be uh, defined on on some specific script like for example a map script here whenever you you have some uh, logic that is local to one particular map uh, it is natural to to put the corresponding script here in the script of that particular map we could also keep everything in the main <laughs> script and say if I undo here and say uh, if uh, the current map is uh, inside dungeon.lua uh, sorry inside dungeon then we we play the sound but uh, it's very hard to uh, it, it becomes very hard to maintain if you put the whole logic in <laughs> in your main file so the more you can separate things the better usually um 
yeah. So another quick quick trick if you want uh, is that you can do some quick debugging with the print function. So this is a regular standard Lua print, uh, just with a slight modification uh, allowing to print things in the Solaris console. But you can print th stuff to uh, as a small debugging tool, the quick debugging tool. Hello, we are on the inside dungeon map. You just pressed. And some key. Okay, and now uh, this debugging console here will uh, print whatever you passed to the print function. So you can see all the uh, keys that are being pressed by the player. So it's possible to to plug a real actual powerful debugger to Solaris. Uh, we can do that in in particular with Zero Brain, which is a cool Lua editor. Um, and we'll see that in another tutorial. But as a first step, it's very useful to to know this quick way of debugging with uh, the good old print. So hopefully that will help you. Um, yeah, so again, the, the logic here is that the player presses a key, Solaris detects the key and calls your Lua code here, if it exists, of course. And when this function exists, it is executed. And here we are calling the standard uh, Lua print function. Actually, almost standard because, yeah, as I was saying, there is a slight uh, customization uh, internal to the engine to just allowing to just allow uh, whatever is printed to appear here in the console. But um, it's kind of kind of off topic here. <laughs> My point is that sometime, sometimes, sometimes Solaris calls your code like with these own functions here that we call events. And here it passes the key that was pressed as a parameter. And sometimes it's your code that is calling Solaris here. For example, here to play a sound. Okay, so I just wanted to insist on the fact that the communication can happen both ways between your scripts and Solaris. And everything is documented in the in, in the big documentation pages here. Okay, I think that's all I wanted to say. Uh, I hope it was clear enough. As always, we will be happy to help. You can just join our Discord and we can discuss code. Thank you all for watching this tutorial and see you next time. Bye.